Good morning. Welcome in once again to Sports and Boards live every Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. Sports and Boards brought to you by WRMG TV 12, TV 97, Classic Oldies 97.9, and the Park and Recreation Department here in Red Bay. We're going to go in the studio with our Park and Rec Director, Dean Hubbard, and special guest this morning, Max Howell. Good morning, Keith. Thank you for uh, all you do, and we thank y'all for tuning in this morning, and uh, we appreciate y'all uh, tuning in with us every Tuesday morning from uh, 7 o'clock to 7.30. Uh, it's a little time for us to give uh, the information back for, to the, from the city to what's going on with all our park and rec and a lot of other things going on uh, in, the, in the town, and um, just want to kind of get y'all started this morning. The, we've had a great year at the swimming pool. Uh, the fun park, Red Bay Fun Park, we uh, actually wound up our uh, opening through the day uh, this past Friday, but uh, we are going to stay open on Saturdays and Sundays. We'll be open from 12 to 5 on Saturdays and 1 to 5 on Sundays. Um, we're going to try to do that all the way through September. If weather permits, we're going to try to keep it open as long as we can. Uh, I know football will be starting, a lot of things going on, and uh, we'll just kind of see how it goes. But as long as we uh, have a crowd there, we're going, we're going to try to keep it open. Uh, also, uh, there's still plenty of time available to uh, have parties. We've, we've uh, had real good success this year with parties. We've probably had 50 or so. Still got a lot of them booked for the, for the month of August. So there's still plenty of time to, uh, to call and get those um, bookings. Uh, we've got uh, a new sign here that we've got put up. It's got the uh, new city uh, website on it. We just got that website kicked off a few weeks ago and uh, still in a process of getting a lot of information on there. But you can go to cityofredbay.org and uh, you, there's the city phone number. You can always call that and get information. But um, you can go to cityofredbay.org and you can click to all the different links and you can see uh, pretty much what's going on. We've got Founders Day coming up September the 16th and uh, all that information's on there. We've got a barbecue contest uh, that the Park and Rec is going to be putting on. With this, I think this will be our sixth annual one. Um, we're uh, getting sponsors gathered up for that right now so we can, uh, we'll be uh, announcing the prize money and all that. Uh, in the near future. Uh, also, we're going to have a 5K run and a one-mile fun run that we that's sponsored by the soccer team through the Park and Rec, and that'll be coming up on that Saturday morning. I mean, yeah, that Saturday morning, the 16th at 7 o'clock, up at the high school uh, football field. You can sign up online. You can go to the cityofredbay.org and look at all that, and click on all those links. And and uh, Miss Tracy at uh, Clark at City Hall has done a wonderful job of putting this thing together. The new t-shirts are in. If uh, anyone's interested in the Founders Day t-shirt, you can get yours early. You can, uh, they're available right now. Um, there's still plenty of room for booths and uh, the different things that'll be going on that day. We encourage anybody that's uh, a vendor or you just want to uh, have a display of some sort, you're welcome to come to, to City Hall and talk to Tracy and she'll get you uh, all fixed up for that. Um, also, we have uh, soccer sign-ups going on. Uh, that's on the website. You can go to uh, Park and Rec and click up on there, and you can see all that information. And actually, you can pay online now. That's something we're trying to get straightened out, but uh, we think we've got it fixed out and uh, fixed up. And uh, we encourage you to do that. I know sometimes getting around the city hall at four o'clock is a pretty uh, hard job to do. So. We're trying to open this up at different venues and see how we can uh, get it going. And um, also on the lines with the soccer, we are going to uh, be helping Belmont get their program started. They're trying to uh, get the soccer program going. Uh, they're going to play with us this year. So anyone from Belmont that wants to sign up, you can sign up through the Belmont Park and Recreation. Uh, but they're going, to, they're going to consolidate with us and play in our league to uh, we see what their numbers are and then maybe next year they'll have their own teams. But uh, we, you know, we try to do this with anybody that, uh, that's around us because a lot of them are, you know, we're all family and uh, most of them work together and go to church together and we're trying our best to help them. Uh, we, you know, we did this with Vina and we've done this with Bell Green a few times and 
So we're just trying to help them out to get their program started. In the long run, it'll help us. So uh, we encourage you to do that, anyone that wants to, to be part of that. Um, we um, got school starts back Wednesday, and uh, that's just coming up tomorrow. School's coming. Now, I can't believe this summer's went by so fast, and uh, we uh, appreciate the teachers and all they've done. We've got a new principal at Red Bay, and uh, uh, Mr. Mitchell's going to have some changes coming down the path, but I think you know change sometimes is a good thing. So uh, we, we wish them the best and all the kids the best that's coming uh, up to this new year. Football will be getting kicked off here in a couple of weeks. I know they're practicing pretty hard, and uh, they're uh, getting ready for their opening day, and uh, that it, we'll have more information on the football. And, and uh, Jack has got some ideas on how we can uh, kind of communicate this back and forth each week, and so we'll be doing that. But uh, I'm going to turn it to our guest this morning, Mr. Mike Sal. He is uh, a long time. Uh, anything. Uh, anything, everything. I guess you would say. He's, well, you're uh, older than dirt, do you? You know, you, <laughs> it happens that way. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. He's uh, he's working on a new sports program, and I, I'm gonna let him tell a little bit more about it. And uh, you just kind of tell us uh, your background, and and because you know a lot of people out here, they probably heard your name, but they don't really know what you do. So, yeah, Dean, thank you. It uh, it's been a good time. A lot of people. I try to retire about three times. It just didn't take. It just I just didn't didn't, no, it just didn't happen. And all right. Partnered up with a guy over in Alabama that's kind of the voice of the Alabama High School Athletic Association. He calls radio and television for all the championship games and all the playoff games and game of the week around the state. Been doing it about 30 years. <coughs> Pardon me. And uh, of course, I had a, big, a good background, coached for 30 in the media business for over 25 now. And uh, it, the things just kind of came together. We hooked up with Charter Communication, which uh, in Alabama, Max South is the same thing in Mississippi, and mm -hmm. we're trying to work with them now for a program maybe for next year. But it's really been an uh, intriguing uh, combination to have Jerry and myself. Jerry's family is long term. Uh, they had his dad had Ernie Young Chevrolet dealership 30 years in Birmingham, and had a couple down in Florida, and really had done financially very, very well. And I thought Jerry was retired. But he, he's like me, he can't, he can't stay. We, he can't I've been stop. on the I got in at about 10 o'clock last night, been on the road since Sunday, uh, excuse me, since Saturday, really, and uh, trying to put together the, the final pieces of the financial part. But it, uh, it will be really based around the Southeastern Conference college football, and we'll, we'll take North Alabama and Troy and Jacksonville and, and, and West Alabama and Sanford and UAB. We'll take those teams along the way. Uh, we'll discuss those. We open up with Lindy's magazine. Lynn Scarver's a good friend of mine. is the vice president and editor of that magazine. They print a million magazine a year. He'll be our first guest uh, from the college side. And then Jerry will be responsible for bringing in maybe Josh Bean, one of the big writers from AL.com to talk high school. It'll be an hour show. We launch it uh, two weeks from yesterday, last night on Monday the 21st. It'll be a, a live show from 9 to 10 at night. And then, then Charter will replay that. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at noon. So we'll get it four times during the week. With that, though, uh, we, we have interaction there. We have our Facebook page already up and, and running. Uh, and it's, we did a little different twist. We want the Facebook page to be interactive with us. Mm -hmm. It's called Ask Game Day TV. So okay. you can actually type the question while we're on the air. We'll take it right there and, and answer questions from there. Can do the phone calls if we like, but uh, sometimes in a show like this, to keep down the controversy, yeah. we can screen the questions, yeah, yeah, <laughs> if that go. makes sense. You don't want to be a fine bomb. <laughs> no, I don't plan to be. Paul and I have been good friends a long time, but, yeah. you know, it's just uh, some, of the, some of our personalities vary, as you would yeah. guess. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we're totally excited about it. The, the word is right now from Charter and the other uh, resources that we've touched uh, says it'll be the biggest launching since the SEC TV. We'll launch with a million homes the first really? night out. Wow. So we're ex totally excited. We've got about 10 radio stations that's going to carry the show in addition to the TV. So we're just really, really excited about taking this to a little bit different level. We'll, again, we'll have high-profile guests every week, some college coaches, ones that can't sit on the set with us. We'll do this thing, you know, that they'll, it'll be a call in. They'll throw the picture up on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, but you talk about a work in progress, and we've been working with this thing over two months now. We hired our producer last night. Uh -oh. so, <laughs> so now, of course, he's got a hundred ideas. Yeah. So uh, the next couple of weeks will be spent really trying to organize and be sure the, the, the structure of the show 
It's what will be very, and, hopefully very And receiving. Jack's going to be carrying this show. Jack will carry it here, yes, and we tickle to death to have that in, yeah. in this part of the state. Hey, that's great. I mean, Jack does a wonderful job. I mean, I asked you this morning, I said, how well you know Jack? And you started laughing. That's the response. That's the response you always get when you talk about Jack. Everybody just starts laughing because uh, we, we had a council meeting last night, and for 20 minutes he sits and tells me the same jokes I've heard for about four or five years, you know. Right. But it's fun, and I, we thank the world of him. And he, he's, he's really excited about yeah. this, and he's trying to, you know, promote his station. But he also is. he's given us different avenues of, of yeah. you know, kind of branch outside of Red Bay a little bit and sure. not, not watch the same commercials over and over, you know, yeah. sometimes. It's, it's great. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And, it uh, is. And, and, you know, we go back and look, and I, say I, had a, I really had a great coaching career, but I think the media career was something – you know, somebody asked me one time, he said, how did you make that change? Well, I was, I was a career assistant coach. I was a couple of head coaches at a couple of high schools along the way, but primarily at the college level, I was a career assistant. And after I spent about 30 years, my last on the field job was at Ole Miss, uh, and that's obviously a hot topic right now. Oh, I don't, yeah. don't want to talk about Jack and really <laughs> yeah. jump, in, jump in with that. But uh, basically, I cr helped create the first regional sports talk show, a conference call out of Memphis. Uh, that was in 1997. Uh, we ended up with 123 stations carrying that because wow. we we traveled with that. We went to at that time <clears throat> there were only 12 SEC schools, and in the spring and or in the late summer we covered every campus. We do a show live from every campus. Mm -hmm. That really generated a lot of buzz around the southeast. And prior to that, uh, I was fortunate enough to be the first on-air guy in Atlanta, Georgia, for 680 the fan. We created that. Took the, mm -hmm. took. The station that was really in bankruptcy and pulled it out, Cumulus, that was the formation of Cumulus, which ended up owning, owning over 500 radio stations. Yeah. But uh, we, we had a, I told, I made a joke a while ago, we, I walked in and, and looked around, and, and this was before you got here. Mm -hmm. I said, well, it looked like I got it by myself. And, and I, all of a sudden, flashback, when I went to Atlanta, 1993, yeah. Five hours, nine to two, by myself. Oh, me. <laughs> and I struggled for 30 minutes. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, but now I will say this. We were the first there, and it's a huge market, as you know. Nobody had ever had sports talk. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they'd get, I could tell you some jokes of some things that happened. Ray Goff, we, we stirred him up big time. He, he was at Georgia at that time, and really kind of doing it. He was a, an alum, and they brought him back, and uh, just wasn't having a good year. And he used to call me every morning at 6 o'clock. He said, why are you trying to get me fired? And I, about the third morning, Dean, I said, listen, I said, Coach, I ain't never been on your staff. I ain't been on the sideline. I ain't never called a play for you in something else. I ain't never lost to Vanderbilt at homecoming. <laughs> Click. <laughs> he never called back. Yeah. <laughs> no. So anyway, sometimes, you know, you got to speak to people in terms they understand. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I did. I, I, you know, I, I'm so fortunate and, and blessed to have had really, really a great career. And, yeah. I, I'm, and I told Jerry the other day, my partner in Al at, uh, over in Birmingham, I said, uh, this has got to be my last hurrah. I mean, I, yeah. can't, I can't keep going. I don't. Somebody asked me one day, said, well, you know, just how old are you? And I don't ever tell anybody that. I, how, I said, well, let me just tell you, on my desk in my den, I have one picture of my mom holding me, rocking me. And, and it's one of these big radios. She's sitting in front of one of these big radios because this is before television. Yeah. She's rocking me. And, and when I first got the picture, I asked, I said, mom said, what, what, what's on the radio? She said, I'll just tell you, I was sitting there listening to the bomb in the Pearl Harbor. So, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. True story. <laughs> so anyway, it, uh, it, it, it evolved through the years. I came from a mixed family. Dad played basketball at Alabama. My granddad was the first licensed vet in the state of Alabama, and my great-granddad was the third licensed vet in, in America, wow. both Auburn graduates. Yeah. So uh, that's the story. I'll tell you that quick story. I was being recruited out of high school. Auburn had just won the championship. And in those days, you know, they talk about now having early signing period. Well, mm. we had early signing periods back in the fifties. Yeah, they could the SEC schools could sign early, so yeah. we could sign the the first weekend after Thanksgiving. So I, we came home from church on a Sunday afternoon, and Coach Bryant had just been hired at Alabama, and uh, and of course Coach Sheridan was still at Auburn, and I had a couple of offers there in Kentucky and Southern Miss, or two or three others. So I go in, I come in, Dad's in there reading the paper. <clears throat> and uh, he said, "You better get that. You better get that paperwork signed. Get it on in, because he said, I'll be sure that I know where you want to go.'" And I said, "No, nah, I knew what the other side was, was going to be talking, so I was already being pulled." 
So anyway, I walked in the kitchen and mom said, you got that paperwork signed? Yeah, I said, mom, I just don't know. I just don't know. I'm so confused on where I said, I know how you all are. And so she, I will never forget this. She was standing over the stove, stirring a bowl of a pot of soup, never looked up. She said, you do want to come home, don't you? And that's all she said. <laughs> you knew so what that meant. I knew exactly what that meant. <laughs> uh, we, I was born and raised in Prattville, just out, about 50 miles from Auburn. So, in fact, it was almost halfway between Tuscaloosa and Auburn. Okay. So, you know, it was, a, you talk yeah. about a split, that was a true split. <laughs> but I, I think you know, everything's split around here. <laughs> oh, I, you know, it, it's, it, I, love, I love it. I've been involved in the, in the Florida, Florida State rivalry for several years. And of course, Alabama and Auburn most all my life. And, and then the Miss, ended up my career with Mississippi, in, in Ole Miss, Mississippi State. And uh, really some good rivalries, but there's nothing like Alabama and Auburn. No. I mean, that, that's, that's 24-7, you know, yeah. 365. That's just the, the way it is. So, uh, but yeah, I, I, I bounced around a lot. I was, I was a career assistant coach. Uh, head coach at uh, Gulf Breeze High School and done it over at Rainbow Small School, and uh, but primarily an assistant. But I, I will tell you this: you're talking about never claim to be a smart guy. But I told you a while ago, one thing I could do: I read a roster. I was fortunate enough. I went to Scamby High School when Emmett Smith was a sophomore. I, I recalled every snap from his junior senior year. On that senior high school team in 1986. We had 19 Division One players. Wow. Florida took seven of them really? off one high school team. That yeah. tells you anything. We're yeah. number one in the nation. All right, I go from there to Florida State. We had Deion Sanders, Leroy Butler, O.J. Haggard. Uh, we had seven. We had seven uh, number one draft picks in that yeah. year. Number one in the country, start off, go to Miami, get beat, come back. His <laughs> story. Uh, <clears throat> Keith will remember this. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Keith Kennedy uh, yeah. works with him. Uh, <clears throat> We go to Miami, get beat. Tommy Tuberville was a defense coordinator. Jimmy Johnson was a head coach. They had a great team. Yeah. Dwayne Johnson, the Rock, was playing defensive mm -hmm. tackle over our, over our center. So, uh, Coach Bowden would get through, get on. The kids get a shower, put them on the plane. He gets up and he says, "Guys, evidently we didn't get, we didn't have, we didn't work hard enough in the two days. Now you can't do this today." Mm -hmm. We flew back to Tallahassee, put them back in the uniforms and scrimmaged their son up. Really? And uh, we wouldn't let me know after that, <laughs> as he said. Sometimes you have to speak to people in terms they understand. Yeah, I can <laughs> and understand did. That. But we did. I, I'd say I bounced around. I had so many great kids along the way. And, and a lot of times the media perception that you read about the kids is nowhere like they are. Yeah. You know, they talk about Dion. Dion was the first guy at practice every day, the last guy to leave every day, sit on the front row of every meet, never saw him go to sleep. Yes or no, sir, whatever it took to make it. He knew from the time he was 10 years old that yeah. he was special, and he was special. Yeah. And of course, Emmett was the other way around. Emmett was the number one high school player in America when he graduated, had over 200 scholarship offers. I'd take him home in the afternoon. You couldn't get to his house, because in those days, there was no limits on how many times a coach could see you, how many phones. They had not, not only, first of all, took the phone out, then they moved because yeah. there were so many people. And here's a story that many people don't realize. Emmett Smith wanted to go to Auburn. That was his first choice. Pat died, Larry Blakeney, before Larry went to Troy, when Larry was a defensive back coach there, sit in my office at least two days a week in its senior year. They drive down from Auburn, but then drive, get back, go, time to get back to practice. And uh, he really, he wanted, he thought really he wanted to replace Bo Jackson. He wanted to become yeah. the, the legacy behind Bo. And, uh, but I don't, Florida didn't do anything illegal, but the, the attorney, of which the law school, by the way, at Florida is named after, mm. is from Pensacola. And uh, it so happened Emmett's mom worked for one of his businesses and his dad worked for the other. Uh, this and, just worked and, out that way. It just worked out that way, and they both like their job. Yeah. That's all I say. <laughs> so, but anyway, just a great kid, just a great, and still is today. Yeah. Uh, got one of the biggest development companies in Dallas now in, as far as residential and commercial. So, yeah. But I say I was so fortunate to be involved with those kind of guys. Uh, had a chance to, to run the recruiting office at Ole Miss and ran it at Troy, won a national championship, and uh, then also worked with Brad Scott at Florida State. Mm. And so consequently, I may not have coached very well, but I can tell you what to do. I could look at a kid and tell you if he can play. Because <laughs> I could measure him up against some of the good ones. Yeah, yeah you've seen, you seen, seen goodness. I have seen some great ones. Here, That's so. right. Uh, you know, and, and it, we're, we're going to run out of time here in a little bit because we can go in a hundred different directions <laughs> with this. But, you know, my fear with sports right now is the way all of it's going. You know, sure. you've got Under Armour, you've yep. got uh, Rivals, you've got uh, all these different people that are pulling ESPN, 
they're rating these kids. And, you know, some of these kids go to Alabama and Auburn and, you know, everybody's talking about how Dude, great they're going to be yeah. and they're going to be the best, greatest thing. And, and they never yeah. get on the field. That's very true. And, and you think, well, what went wrong? Yeah. You know, did like you said a while ago about one of the Auburn guys, how, what – why did they not that's see this? It, that's exactly you know, right. and so my fear for all this is we're publicizing it so much True. that we're losing. Yep. You know, it, it, we're losing part of the but, the old school stuff. But, and, you know, but see, who drives that? The fans drive. The that, fans see? drive that they and drive money. <laughs> well, they see the fan. That's right. Where yeah. the money goes, that's what happens. That's what happens. It's, it's, you know, you can almost look at the trends in the NFL mm -hmm. and see them drift down, and that's what's happened. The only thing different about that are those high-profile kids that come out now that are being recruited by 10, 15 mm -hmm. schools. They are custom to that. I mean, I've talked to several in the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. Had a chance to talk to a couple this past year, worked very close with West Point High School. Mm -hmm. They won the 5A championship yes. in the state of uh, Mississippi and had some great players. They got the great, a great Marcus Murphy. He's going to be a great running back. Uh, you know, I, I kid – Chris Chambers standing the head coach. I said, you got him out of position. I said, he's going to be a defensive back at the next level. 6'1", 2'10", 4'4". But his stride, he's got a long stride. I mean, he's, he's perfect for a free. I yeah. mean, for a free. He could, when the ball's in there like that. He, we he go to, read it, huh? we, go to, we go to practice in Florida State. It's always reminds me. We're there. We get ready to play Michigan State. And I, I handled the receiving team. And, of course, Dion was, we always had him back to catch punts and all. Cause, and we were back there one day, and he was juking around and, and Coach Bowden comes down out of the towel and pulls everybody together. He said, now, Dion, we're going to match you up against Andre Risen. And Andre Risen was the number one riser, wide receiver in the country that year. He said, uh, Dion's standing there, his head down. He said, I know, because I know. He said, he said, you've got to be serious about this. It was Thursday afternoon now. You've got to be serious about this. <laughs> I know, Coach. I, I know. So finally he just walked. He, we had him on the, in the knees, and Coach was in the back. Coach Bowden was up front. Dion walks around to the front, puts his arm. He said, now, Coach. He said, you know, I, I play around out here at practice, but you know when the ball's in the air, ain't nobody faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, amen, amen. Coach Bowden just shook his head and walked off. You don't know the show that we played uh, Michigan State that year and the next year, Andre Rising caught one eight yard out. Really? That's right. He shut him down completely. Yeah. But bottom line is that, you know, it, it's all those things come together with the high profile kids, and that's where the conversation started. Those kids know. Dion knew when he was at Andre Rising, those guys knew from the time that they were, you know, in peewee football, mm -hmm. that they were special. They were yeah. different. They set themselves apart. They didn't just show up one day at yeah. campus and, and say, hey, it'd be great. Yeah. No, they were already there. Yeah. You know. yeah, people start telling them that at a young age, you know, when, you know, Red Bay's got a long history of yeah. football and, you know, going back to Keith Kennedy and all yeah. those guys. And, and you know, I can remember watching them play when I was pretty young and mm -hmm. everybody wanted to grow up and be like that. And Red Bay's kept a great tradition. You know, yeah. we've, we've kept good coaches and good program. And, uh, that's great, and, uh, too. And the town absolutely supports it. You See, know, that's, uh, that's the thing that, that bothers me in large cities particularly because there's so many other things to do. In yeah. small towns, particularly in the south, and, and that's – I hope – and I cringe every time I see a, an ESPN game on Friday night. Yeah. I really do. I, you know, they can go Thursday, Saturday night. I don't even care if they go Sunday night. But the fact is, you don't need to take away from, from the Friday high school. Night football. They do not. That's, yeah. that's, the, that's, that's the meat and potatoes. That's the guts of the program. That's, that's where it. the kids are coming from. That's it. That's for sure. And, you know, and they give them – it's so publicized now with all yeah. these rankings. You know, it Hoover's is. been ranked forever. And, sure. And I think Starville High School was ranked for a while. Right. And that's, South Panola over here yeah, in Mississippi. Right. You know, South Panola, they're the – they're the Hoover of exactly. Mississippi. Oh, Mississippi. So, that's I mean, true. it's just amazing to how much yeah. talent comes out of this little, these rural Yeah, sometimes areas. you wonder if all of them just originally from that home. Town. Well, <laughs> I, I've been to South Panola. I've been to Batesville several times. Yeah. There's nothing there. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lance Pogue is Lance Pogue's uncle, uh, the head coach at, at South Panola. His uncle was my assistant at Florida, at, uh, at Ole Miss my last really? two years there. Yeah, he was. Uh, we were in a recruiting office, and he was there. And I met Lance when he was about ten. But he grew up to be an outstanding football coach. But he had a lot of talent. Yeah. And he had some yeah. help along the yeah. way. I can promise you that. Yeah. My nephew played at Starfall High School, and we would go okay. watch, play. play yeah. He played at he ended up playing at Sanatobia, uh -huh. and uh, we would go play baseball, and they ended up playing them, then had to play them in the playoffs. And <laughs> right. he, he never beat them, but he got close. <laughs> and, 
you know, and it's just it's amazing to see all the guys yep. that, that, you know, a lot of them sign with State or Ole Miss, but sure. a lot of talent comes out of those little oh, towns. It does and, it. See, and it's all Friday night football. That's right. That's what it's all about. It's you all know, Friday if they ever get away from that, and, you know, and even like in some of the northern towns, they've gone to, to Saturday afternoons yeah. and Friday afternoons. You know, that's not, that's not high school no, football. No, <laughs> no. It's, it, not. It's, it's nothing like – coming to Red Bay on a Friday night and the, the lights are on and That's you can right. see them all over town. That's exactly right. And you pull up in there and, and it's a little bit cool and the band's playing. And, you know, we go there expecting to win. That, you, you know, have that, to do that. Well, that's true. That's, uh, we didn't all the yeah. time, but we expected to. Sure. And, uh, well, see, I, I was raised in a town this I, yeah. about 2,500 people when I left Prattville. Of course, it's 40,000 there now. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> that one kind of grew. Four-lane helped that. Uh, yes, it did. But the fact is, though, I was raised in that environment. And mm -hmm. I didn't know anything else, basically, when I came through school and everywhere I went. And I did in the first 10 years I coached, uh, particularly when I got to the college level, I was on the road recruiting. Mm -hmm. I loved to leave at campus about 10 o'clock on Friday morning and hit the road. And I'd get three or four schools in a row yeah. on Friday nights and have to catch a plane somewhere to get, catch up with the team on Saturday. But that was, to me, the, one of the most exciting times of my career. Yeah, I still, well, that's great. Still love it. Well, we, you, do you have a time frame between you and Jack? It's going to kick off here. Yeah, we'll start here uh, Monday night at Monday 9 o'clock, August 21st. Okay, uh, that's coming it's up pretty quick. It's called Game Day TV will be the show. The, the Facebook page is Ask Game Day TV. It's an interactive Facebook. It's up and running right now. But it, those of you that want to see it, if you, if, you, if you, for whatever reason, miss it here on a Monday night, it'll be replayed. It'll be on, really on demand on, our, on the Facebook page. You can okay. hit it, hit, hit play, live play, boom. It blows right there to you, so Good deal. you can pick it up. Well, you know, everybody that knows Jack knows he's all about sports. Yeah. He, he come to me a few weeks ago and told me you was coming, and he was, man, he, you know how Jack is. <laughs> he was pumped up, so he said, man, I got the guy coming. So so <laughs> he, he was honored to have you, and I know it's going to well, be, we, we wish the best things you, for Dad. all I, this. And I'm tickled to death about it. I really am. It's things have just all of a sudden popped in from everywhere that we weren't expected. Yeah. And we ended up with some really nice sponsorships, and, and so we've got the financial thing out of the way now, basically. Yeah. And we can go. We can run with the programming. Good deal. Good deal. Well, Keith's giving us a sign back there, and uh, we uh, do appreciate everybody. We'll remind you one more time: any Red Bay information through the city, anything, uh, you need to go to cityofredbay.org and uh, check it out. Check the new website out, and uh, we uh, honor any of your compliments. Anything we you see, we need to add or change. Please let us know, and we'll we'll try to make that as best we can. Uh, we appreciate you coming today. Thank appreciate you so Appreciate you much. coming appreciate in, and uh, really we look do. forward to watching you and everything on Jack's on on the yeah, TV ninety seven. I'll probably be sitting back up here with you from time to time. Yeah, <laughs> that, you can come anytime you want to. That's <laughs> for sure. And uh, we appreciate Keith for everything you do. And uh, let me pray for us right quick, and we're going to go. Lord Father God, we just thank you for loving us. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us. We thank you for this day and we thank you for the rain and we just pray that you'll lead and guide and direct us and we pray for uh, uh, Mr. Howe here that you'll just bless their business and uh, keep your hands upon them and thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for our city and our leaders and we just pray that you'll uh, uh, continue to be our God and lead and guide and direct us in the way that you see fit. Thank you for all you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all and we'll see you all again next week. You've been watching and listening to Sports and More. It's every Tuesday, 7 a.m. Sports and More brought to you by WRMG TV 12, TV 97, Classic Oldies 97.9, and the Red Bay Park Recreation Department. Your hosts for Sports and More, Park Recreation Director Dean Hubbard. Special guest for this morning, Max Howard. Max Howell, be sure and join us next Tuesday, 7 a.m. for Sports and More.